Are you bored living a mediocre life? We were too, and we know how to change that. Each week, we'll leave our comfort zones to explore a new topic, then step onto our soapboxes, a safe space to sound off on our latest adventure. Come explore with us. All opinions are welcome. This is a mindset. This is a lifestyle. This is Siren Soapbox. Hello and welcome fellow explorers. Thank you for diving in with us today. Our mission is to explore beyond comfort zones. Looking to take the first step outside of your comfort zone? Check out sirensoapbox.com for easy ideas you can dive into, like our blog, magazine, Eventbrite classes, and movie club. Come explore with us. Also, join us in welcoming Siren Sara as an American citizen. Welcome to the country, Sarah. All thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the late, great Isaac Newton once said, a body in motion stays in motion. Now, he was talking physics of objects, but the same can be said about our body. Move it or lose it, so to speak. According to CuriousDesire.com, dance has been a part of society for centuries, and for good reason. It is a low impact activity that doesn't require any particular skill to do. Anyone can dance regardless of age, physical ability, or experience. Here are 11 benefits of dancing. Dance can help with weight loss, improve sleep. It's a great way to socialize and meet new people, relieve stress, express yourself, improve memory, improve physical and emotional well-being. Great way to stay in shape. Dance can help you learn new things improve your posture, and it can be a form of meditation. The sirens challenged each other to watch the creator of Love Yourself Moving on TikTok and start moving. Let's find out how they did, but first, if at any time the conversation gets too intense, the safe word is... Mango. 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 First up on her soapbox is Murph. I'll have to edit all this out. I feel like my microphone was super far away. I feel pretty lucky to have a body that has always worked for me. I went through a period of time where my hips didn't always feel great, but that pain seems to be less and less these days. One reason I think that's true is because I spent more time lately moving my body. We've done a couple of challenges here on the soapbox that had me walking a 5k walk jog. Plus, I walk at least a mile every day from my parking space to my work and back. But one of my favorite activities is dancing, and I dance every chance I get, sometimes even when there isn't any music to dance to. Over the past couple of months, I've actually started my day with some dancing instead of a typical morning workout. And on those mornings, I feel more energized and generally happier than when I skip the morning dance. And it's my experience that dancing not only gets my body loosened up for the day, but it elevates my overall mood. I mean, who can be sad when they're moving their body to some fun, upbeat music? I dare you to try dancing and not feel happy. I've never had any formal dance training unless you count that fire dancing lesson that we took in March when we were on St. Croix with some fellow sirens. Maybe that does count but that's never really stopped me from taking over a dance floor or a living room or a kitchen. Any place really works. (laughs) Sara, how do you feel about dancing? Well, I really do love to dance. I usually end up on the dance floor at weddings and whenever there's a dance floor really. Now that's not to say that I'm coordinated or have great dance moves. I just really love dancing or moving to music. I like everything from just grooving to the beat to very choreographed country line dancing. In fact, I'm pretty sure that there is a video out there somewhere. It's an, uh, an educational line dancing video and I think I'm part of it, but that's beside the point. I'm usually more likely to get on the dance floor if yummy adult beverages have been involved, but it's definitely not a requirement. I just enjoy the way dancing feels. I'm not sure what it is that I like about it other than that. My biggest challenge when it comes to getting on the dance floor is getting Phil out there with me. Unless there's been a call for the gopher dancers to get on the dance floor, thanks TC for the visual, he's pretty much out. He doesn't mind watching me out there, that's for sure, 
But when I try to lure him onto the dance floor, he's pretty reluctant to join me. We've talked for years about taking dance lessons and one day we're gonna do it. Even if it's just so that we can slow dance all night on the dance floor. Although I really do think we would both love to be able to get on the dance floor and do the cha-cha together. One of my favorite siren soapbox challenges was when we learned how to dance with fire. That experience was more than just the dancing though. It was an incredibly powerful feeling to be able to learn the techniques of the dance and feel comfortable with the fire. A big part of the excitement for me though, of course, was watching Bill enjoy the dancing, but I don't think he thought of it as dancing. It was the playing with fire that he loved, uh, reference the burn mark across his face. We do still plan on taking dance lessons eventually. It's been on our long list of things that we'd like to do. Jess, tell us about your dancing. Well, as someone who has broken both of my ankles multiple times, movement is super important to me. If I don't move enough during the day, I end up with cankles at the end of the day and it's really painful and ugly. My Fitbit helps me with this by buzzing at me if I haven't taken enough steps, but sometimes having a desk job really sucks because you're chained to it. Watching Krista's videos has and how she used dance to help her pain was inspiring. I wish I had her rhythm and moves. I love walking and hiking and of course scuba diving as my movement of choice though. I'm not a dancer. And I never really have enjoyed dancing, aside from a slow dance with my hubby on the dance floor at weddings and such, but I love to watch dancing and I super appreciate it. One of my best friends is a dancer and I could watch her all day. Even movies about dancing are fascinating to me, but that be, could be because I grew up with Patrick Swayze and Dirty Dancing. I mean, that's a classic. So living in Hawaii, I've been learning about the history of hula and how it's part of their culture and its importance. Dance seems to play a part in most cultures. So I wish I enjoyed it for more, but for now, I think I'm just gonna keep enjoying it from the peanut gallery. Elsie, what's your favorite type of dance? But my favorite style of dance is freestyle. And this is typically blaring some sort of rock song and using a spatula or a hairbrush as a makeshift microphone and just moving. Even if it's just for a few minutes, I feel happier and more energized. I typically don't like dance classes, except for I think everybody on here can agree when fire is involved, throw back to episode 71. Growing up, I did ballet, tap, jazz, and cheerleading, and I was kind of lanky, and it was hard to get my mind to do what the instructor said I should be doing with my limbs, and moving my hips around, uh, it's pretty uncomfortable doing some of those moves back then. I always found myself looking at everyone else to make sure I was keeping in step, and I especially felt lost if I had to make up my own dance routine. I can still remember the opening portion I made to Billy Joel's River of Dreams because I spent so many hours in my basement practicing over and over again because I cannot for the life of me even remember my own dang routine. Spoiler alert, Napoleon Dynamite had a better number than me. I bet it would be better now that I have found more self-confidence as an adult. Although remembering specific dance moves and all the fancy names will probably always be a mystery to me which is why I love freestyle. Just moving around, however, and not even thinking about it. Even if it doesn't look good, it makes me feel happy to be one with the music in my own way. Like last week on vacation, I would randomly play music and break into dance with my son, niece, and nephew. And it was so much fun to see their faces light up and get some energy out. TikTok is a great motivator, especially watching Love Yourself Moving. Krista is so fun and positive to watch that I always feel inspired to move. Some of our videos have great tips on how to get started on doing some of those moves, which is very helpful for this klutzy gal. TC, what gets you moving? You know, what gets me moving is a beat I can't ignore. If you couple that with a really good mood, which I'm in most of the time, then there will be dancing and it does not matter where I am. I'm a big fan of kitchen dancing. Dino and I will sometimes just start dancing with no regard to where we are, the living room, a friend's house, the spice aisle of a grocery store. Just to be clear, I'm not a good dancer, but I do love dancing. Sometimes my moves are just meant to be silly. I have my own peanuts moves that I do every single day. It's kind of a shimmy from the, full, from the shoulders on down followed by a leg kick straight out to the side. Exaggerated facial expressions are an important part of this dance. Oh, and 
unwavering eye contact. This typically ends in giggling. I giggle, Dean giggles. Then we both start dancing these super fabulous moves around the house. I bet everyone's wishing they could see it. I'm not sure I'm ready to put these moves out there on social media just yet. And this is what I love about Krista, the love yourself moving girl. She's out there moving it like she just doesn't care. Although she does look really good while she's doing it. She encourages people to just move, not to seek perfection, just move. She faces comments head on with responses that remind us that we are never too old to get started, that words are very important, dance moves don't need to be perfect or include hand movement, that we are not invisible, that we should move any way we can move, and that we belong to a community. Did I mention that words are important? And those are some powerful words. And it's just fun to watch her dance without inhibitions. Also fun to listen to the music in her videos. I'm not going to lie. I looked some of them up. Songs I should have known, but I didn't know. Krista is all about eating the right foods and eliminating the wrong foods, moving the body and decreasing stress. And she encourages us to dance or to move in any way we can. All of this sounds like solid advice for a happy life. Why does Krista care so much about these things? Why has she dedicated so much time and effort to sharing this with so many others and reminding us to just love, our, love ourselves moving? In January 2000, Krista was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, a debilitating autoimmune disease leading to chronic pain, disability, depression, isolation, and hopelessness. In 2015, she began addressing root cause drivers of systemic inflammation, which dramatically improved her overall quality of life and mobility. Today, Krista is a certified holistic practitioner, speaker on chronic illness, grateful dancer, and lifestyle advocate for empowered living. Through her individual coaching and encouragement on social media, she inspires others to believe in themselves and their ability to thrive in mind, body, and spirit. Sirens, please help me welcome Krista Rowan to this episode of Sirens Soapbox. Yay, welcome. welcome. Welcome to the show, Krista. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you. You guys did your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Krista, I'm curious. What okay. got you started down the path of movement and dance? I have to tell you, TC, I have moved and danced most of my life. So I'm one of those kids that was just doing whatever on the front line, right? You entertain your parents or just for the sake of moving. I was very sporty. I wanted to try new things. So I always loved movement in general. It's how we grew up, just on the playground, whatever. And because I was a teenager in the 80s, when a lot of, you know, well, let's back up. The 70s was a disco and funk era, right? So we were all into that. And roller skating was huge in trying to get those beats and the groove. And then we hit the 80s and the 80s music hit. You know, you start sneaking out to the clubs and figure out what that's all about. And I started to become exposed to a lot of different, you know, dance styles and different type of music as well. And it was really just the love of how it made me feel. It wasn't really that I was trying to learn specific steps. I just wanted to experience it all. And I naturally just moved in how I felt it. Fast forward, and I did that most of my 20s as well. Fast forward to 2000 when I turned 30, and I was uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis within 24 hours. Um, I went from a very athletic, capable, moving person to not being able to get dressed or put my shoes on the next morning. Now, it was incredibly profound because I thought I was having an allergic reaction. I didn't think that it was going to be this lifelong struggle now of trying to not just regain movement, but sustain movement. 
And movement became something that was an incredible perspective shift and something I vowed if I ever got back, I would never take for granted again. And that's really how it lined up. It's always been part of me. And then I lost it. And there's been a request to regain it. Now, with that came, of course, less pain. I wanted to be less fatigued. There's a lot that came with autoimmunity that I also wasn't expecting that made moving a challenge. But when I looked at what I wanted that end goal to be, I wanted less pain so I could move. I wanted, <clears throat> excuse me, more energy so I could move. I wanted more hope and motivation so I could move. So it really all kind of funneled to this end goal so I could move because it would take me from being bedridden to being able to participate in life. And no matter what that looked like, whether it was dance or just walking my dog or even just going to see my son play a hockey game, we need movement for all of those things. So when I advocate to move however you can, it's not necessarily to be this next dance star. It's literally just to move because your body needs it for health, but so you can participate in your own life. So do you have any tips or tricks for people who want to get started dancing for the first time? Or maybe it's not just dancing, but how, how do we hmm. find our out, what do we enjoy yeah. doing? How do we know? Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> for dancing specifically, the very first thing I encourage people to do is get out of your head. So many people get stuck in this comparison of having to do specific steps or dance a specific style and be accepted or be in some performance mode of having that be validated somehow. And I loved what TC said and just like, dancing in her kitchen, because I'm such a kitchen dancer. Um, but it's really about just feeling and experiencing your own body, not comparing what somebody else can do, because all abilities are different. But really getting out of your head, letting go of that expectation of yourself and what you believe other people have of you, and then just moving. Like even if you were just to sway, to your favorite song and feel what that feels like, right? Even if you do a step together, I often say like a step together with your, your feet. I can't get up and show it without showing it, but if you do a step together, okay. So if you're just shifting your weight right now in a step together, throw your body into that. You're still doing a step together, add a twist. You're still doing a step together, right? There's all these layered moves that you can do once you have a foundation that you can build it up and you're dancing. And I loved what you said about dancing is just moving to music because that is exactly what it is. Yes, there's formal ways to do that, but it literally is just moving to music. I try to tell Bill that all the time. Yeah. 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 And yeah. don't you find you're talking about a wedding? Don't you find that people maybe there's a little bit of beverage involved, but <laughs> don't you find that at a wedding, people just kind of let themselves go. And although there may be like a, oh, that guy's like all over the place or that girl's woman is all over the place. Don't they look like they're having the best time? Right. Yeah, so we, we are. are right we always hear that cliche of dance like no one's watching and I always reframe that as dance like you don't care if they're watching <laughs> I love that so much more yeah yeah it's a uh, get out of your head for sure so I'm writing that down <laughs> I know so, I, so I was just thinking I. the same I'm writing it down too everyone's gonna use it on their meme this week um so those of us who do a meme. Yeah. <laughs> so Jess will use it. <laughs> do you have a favorite style of dance, Krista? Um, you know, I grew up through the 80s. I, I tend to dance fusion. So that's a blend of music. People say, how do you dance the way you do? And I, I'm always perplexed by that because I don't know what it is. And I, I 
when I try to break down the mechanics or the foundations of moves, because I want movement to feel accessible. So sometimes we, we think thing is too complicated. And I was like, actually, it's just a little bit of this, this, this. And it's like, oh my gosh, my body can do that. So when I try to break down the, the different movements of a specific step, I realize that there's quite a few that are blended. I would say those blended styles would be maybe a Caribbean dance hall, um, and then there's a lot of belly dance that has come out because it's probably my most recent dance style uh, that helped me build so much range of motion and strength and isolation. So I would say those are the two dominant styles, but then, you know, I throw in a little 70s and <laughs> <laughs> I tend to twirl like it's just freedom, you know, so it's really what I'm feeling at that moment. But for choreography, I say I would innately kind of hear the rhythms of a, of a Caribbean vibe and then belly dance just because it was so practiced when I studied it. So funny that you're saying that because I was going to say there are a couple of your videos where I feel like you just need to move on down to the Caribbean because <laughs> you have the Caribbean moves. Yeah, I love it. I was very, very fortunate to be exposed to a lot of Caribbean culture and music and to be able to share in that and just to feel it is, has been, it's been wonderful. Those are my, uh, my podcast pups. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. What I just want to note as well on the belly dance, I was 37 when I was introduced to belly dance. So I had no idea what the intricacies or what that art form would look like or what it even was. You know, we all have this westernized view of what we thought belly dance was, but until you actually study it and you learn the breakdowns and all the different rhythms and how dynamic it is, it's so much more. And I'm such an advocate of belly dance because it's accessible to every age and every ability. And it really helps, it, it helps center you in so many ways. It's strength building. It helps with range of motion. It helps with rate distri um, weight distribution. It helps with intricacies. And it helps with just having you go inward to express outward. Like it's such a beautiful dance. And because of the practice that's required just at the basic level, that's why it's a, a dominant dance style. But the reason I bring up that I was 37 is because it's never too late. It's not something I studied when I was a child. So this was after the diagnosis. It was after the diagnosis. I had come off a long bout of disability in 2006. Actually, the, my Hawaii friends, I celebrated what I didn't think I was going to be able to walk again and not being able to take two steps to being able to walk more than that. I was like, I can't just walk around the block. I have to do something big. Where can I go? And there was a, a joints in motion program through the arthritis society at the time who had a, a, um, um, a program in Hawaii. So I walked 10K as part of the Honolulu Marathon in December 2006, because I literally wanted to scream from a mountaintop. <laughs> it was like, I need a mountain. Where's a good one? <laughs> Where's a good one to go? Um, so that was my Hawaii side note. But in, real, in all seriousness, I had to rebuild my strength and I had to rebuild my endurance and so much from coming off that disability. I was also 45 pounds heavier and belly dance offered um, a lot of those things that I had spoke about earlier. So that's what really turned me into something that was low impact and accessible. Jess and I took a belly dancing class a couple of times. I will say like that group of people there was a wide range of ages and sizes yeah. and all types of people that it was a really cool experience and it was just it really hard. is it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. a lot of people think you know we'll get shy because they're like oh i you know that you're like dancing for men and it's absolutely the opposite it's such an embrace of community embracing community of women for women 
Um, you may not even see a man in your dance journey. You may just stay within that women community and, you know, feel the safety and the expression of that. So it's definitely something to kind of reframe if you have that perspective of belly dance. It's incredibly beautiful. There was a lot of floor work that I wasn't expecting either, like just sitting on the floor and working those ab muscles that I was not expecting. So you really could. Oh, really? Okay. Sitting down. Yeah. And figuring out how to move certain ways without moving other ways. Yeah. The isolation. Hard. hard. The isolation is hard. It does take practice. Yep. So what motivates you? Like getting started is the hardest part, especially if you are in pain and and stiff. Like how, how do you get inspired to get moving and get to your end goal? It's really around the possibility and it's really about the hope. Um, when you're in a dire state and you're not feeling it, your day sucks, you're hurting, you're tired, and you don't want to think positively, <laughs> right? You, you need something to kind of give you that extra push. And for me, that's always been hope. Um, well, it's been reframed to hope. I wouldn't say it's always been hope. I would say my new, my new way of thinking, my new mindset shifted toward hope um, so that I, I didn't become defeated. And it was really just being kinder to myself that every day was gonna look different and being okay with where I was at at that moment. So I think we're always pressured to be operating at a 10, to be excellent, to be excellent. And you know what? Sometimes I was a three, I was a kick-ass three. And sometimes I was a six and I just was motivated to be the kick-ass six. And I was a lot kinder to myself that those variations were, were going to happen and existed. So it was really just being motivated to whatever that capability was of the day and not putting so much pressure on myself that I had to constantly, you know, be operating at optimum. So how long did it take you before you started feeling the benefits of your dancing? And I guess, did you, like, when did you really start focusing on like daily movement and how long before you noticed the, benef the benefits of that? So it's been progressive. So I've had rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis for 22 years and it's been very, it's been variable over that time. Um, I would say up until 16 years in. And then that was really the turning point for me. Um, I had been very uh, doom oriented, fear focused. Um, everything was focused on the negative. It was focused on what is my life not going to be instead of what could my life be. And it was when I started to look into holistic health and I'll, I'll preface this by saying I'm not anti-med. But when I started to look at holistic health as a complement of how I could, you know, continue to thrive and also have some empowerment of things that I could control, that's when things started to progress in the right, like an improvement direction for me. Now, for me, in order to move more fluidly and to, to gain that strength, I had to really start with dealing with the root cause of inflammation. So that was my primary goal. And as the inflammation came down, my mobility started to improve. But because I had lost so much muscle and um, flexibility and range of motion, I had to rebuild all of that. So I started that by just walking. Like I wasn't out there at the gym. I actually don't go to a gym. Um, I wasn't out there doing all of these defined exercises because they didn't work for me. So that's one of the things in Love Yourself Moving. I also advocate is reframe exercise to moving because I think it makes it more accessible and more consistent that you do something other than nothing. When I really started to gain traction toward dance, I would say it was honestly two years ago. So if you look back at my early TikTok in June, 2020, when I joined um, during the pandemic, the early days of lockdown, it was initially just because I wanted to escape the news, 
But the, the movement and the dance trends really pulled me in. Everyone was jumping and shuffling at the time, and there was no way I could do that. But I wanted to just move to the music. And if you look at my early on TikToks, they're very different than what I'm doing now. But it's because of my love for that movement, motion is lotion, and the consistency of just that love for movement every day, I became stronger, more agile, more flexible, and I jumped for the first time in uh, 21 years. Um, I didn't know I couldn't jump until I tried. (laughs) Have you ever tried it? I was like, oh my God, I can't jump. And it was a very (laughs) odd feeling. Um, It's like, I literally can't jump. Um, So one day I just jumped. I was like, holy crap, like something's happening. (laughs) So a lot of the, a lot of the improvement is what you see in my today version of dancing, but it, it wasn't like that out of the gate. I had to work toward it. So I know you talk about food sensitivities a lot. Can you tell us a little bit about what your journey looked like to figure out what your food sensitivities even were? Yes. So I had to first even comprehend and acknowledge that food sensitivities were even a thing and even existed Um, and to not normalize bloating and to not normalize pain and to not normalize headaches and fatigue and all of those things. Oh my gosh, I look six months pregnant after I ate a pizza. Ha ha ha. Okay. Right. Like we normalize undoing our belt. We normalize going to sleep after we eat. We normalize a little bit of pain, but we don't know where it's coming from. So it was really being conscious that that could be a root cause driver of inflammation and also paying attention. When do I actually feel like this? Now I knew the pizza was super obvious. I just didn't want to give it up because I didn't know it was causing out of other things. Right. It's delicious. I had no idea. I had no idea. I can eat it now, but I didn't for a very long time, but it was it was really just stop normalizing and recognizing that there were a lot of foods and ingredients that were creating inflammation. So the first thing I tell people to do is pay attention, like really wrap your head around that even being a thing to begin with. Start a diet diary. Seven days is all it takes. Don't just write down what you eat, but write down when you eat it, write down how you feel, write down what you drink, you know, write down when you make trip to the room with no windows, you know, all of those (laughs) things. (laughs) Well, maybe you want a window. (laughs) At least a fan. At least put the fan on. (laughs) But you know what I mean? So it's, and you, you'll actually start to see patterns emerge. And there's some things that start to reveal themselves pretty quickly as much as I talk about what to eat, and it's really, it's different for everyone. What's what your neighbor is able to eat could be very different for you. And they can both be on the spectrum of healthy. So you really want to, you know, become intuitive and aware of what your own sensitivities are. You can get tested for those. um, But you can also start by doing it on your own. You brought up TikTok before. How do you stay so positive being a, a figure on social media? Because it, it can be pretty negative sometimes. It can. Um, I'm very fortunate that I don't get huge negativity. Um, you know, of course, I'm subjecting myself to that. It comes with the territory of being on the na- on the Internet on the neighborhood, on the internet. It's a rough hunt. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. Um, you know what? I'm re I stay positive by being myself. I think if I, if I put out posts or if i I was being insincere, um, that would translate. So I'm real. You know, I have posts that are talking posts where I'll address things. If I do get something negative, I tend, I, some negativity is just troll negativity and it is what it is. I honestly don't take any of it personally. So that's number one. I stay positive by don't letting, 
of understanding the source, right? And that's an easy block. Some of the comments that I get are negative in nature. I use them as educational opportunities. So I don't fault people for not knowing something. Sometimes how they communicate it is very unkind, but I use that as, you know, the gist of the comment as a way to educate. So that's kind of how I manage it that way. Otherwise, I just honestly don't take it personally. I'm maybe it would change if there was more. I'm not even going to like wish for that or, you know, think of that as a thing. I just try to put good energy out and I hope that that's what comes back. It's, it is, you said, it's just you, you're being who you are, which I think is very true because there are some comments that, I don't know, some people seem to not be able to help being negative, but just little comments and the way you take those comments head on, like somebody mentioned, that dance would be perfect if you moved your hands this way. And so you just talked about your hands and how rheum um, rheumatoid arthritis yeah. has impacted your hands. And somebody said something about your glasses and you said, yeah, I wear them because I'm what? I need to see. <laughs> it's just, I think it's just your lens. You don't look at it that way. I, I, you don't seem to take things personally. And that's, there's a lot to be said for that, really. You know what, TC, it took me a long time to get here. And at the end of the day, I think it's, it, there's always going to be something, right? There literally is always going to be something that someone points out, whether it's a projection or something that they've been you know, accustomed to saying just because that's what they perceive is not right. Who cares? Right. Who cares? And, you know, when I'm, when I was bedridden and looking at life through a window, do you think someone telling me that my hands aren't moving the right way are really going to impact me? <laughs> like, do you know where I came from? Right. Come jump with me. <laughs> you know, so I, I think that's the, what I have to remind myself too. Like I, I can get caught up in it, but if you start to get defensive, it becomes this, oh yeah, well, guess what I've been through? It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter at the end of the day because we all have our own journeys and we all have our own perspectives and experiences that shape those journeys. And I know that. So when you know where it's coming from, you don't take it personally. TC, it's funny you brought up the, the hands video because that is one that stuck out to me because you handled that with so much grace, Krista. Like, and you see some people online like, oh, well, you know, they cut other people down, but you handled it from a place of grace and trying to educate. And I'm just happy to be here and doing what I'm doing. And I, I love that you handled it the way that you did. It was just, it's very inspirational. Thank you. It is. It is. You know, I often use an analogy of you can't expect a man to know what it feels like to have a baby, right? Like we can, they can have empathy. <laughs> They can have a sense of what's going to happen. They may, they may be told what's going to happen. They may have their own views of that, but they will never really know what it feels like to experience it. And so I give grace to other people because society and their own experience, again, is being projected on what they think I should be doing and I should be feeling, but they don't actually know. So that's why I take the education approach. I don't get defensive, like, don't say that to me, right? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, you don't know. It's like, yeah, you actually don't know. So let me help you understand. <laughs> and then hopefully they, you know, with that understanding, whether they care or not, it doesn't matter. But I think it's a, a good teachable moment in general. And I think sometimes we just need to have a little more understanding, less judgment and more empathy for people. And the magic of that is it helps people to loosen up and ask questions that they might be afraid someone would take offense to. If, if people would be okay with having some of those sensitive questions asked, then everyone might feel more comfortable, people in general might feel more comfortable asking those questions and we could try to work on understanding a little bit. So I'm there's some so magic in not taking that. offense. Thank you for seeing that because it's one of the things that I really try to curate in my community as a safe space. 
whether it's what I put out in posts and people feel vulnerable in sharing their own experience in the comments. I love those comments. I know what it takes to say I'm hurting right now, or I don't think I can get up again, or I don't know, I want to see another day, or I think I'm too old. Like there's so these, these self-deprecating and depression type responses that come out and people just want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to, they want to share. So when I'm responding to those videos, I'm not just, I'm not doing it for me. I'm using it through me as an example. And it's not like I represent everybody, but I am trying to give a voice to people who won't, who, or can't share their voice because I hid for 19 years. I didn't even tell most people I had RA until 19 years in. I know what that shame and that guilt and that isolation feels like. And for me to say, oh my God, I have a, a freaking crooked finger, but this one's straight. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> like it. <laughs> Everybody yeah. needs to tune into the YouTube video for that one. <laughs> it's, like, it's like eerie and badass all rolled up into one. <laughs> So do you have a favorite story from someone that you've motivated to get moving and maybe feel a little better? I don't have one that stands, do I? You know, I do have one. I do have one. In general, I'm very fortunate. It's incredibly rewarding to have people realize their own potential and their own abilities. And I've done a lot of cheering for you posts of people saying, Oh my God, I haven't moved in 20 years. I haven't danced in two years. Oh my gosh. I thought this about myself and now I found this joy. So those are incredibly rewarding comments, but I think the one post that really stood out for me, I did a post two years ago. I think it was in August, 2020, it was one of the most vulnerable things I've ever done for myself. Um, at the time I had a finger drop and I couldn't, I wasn't moving. I was more or less just walking on the spot. You know, I could put my hands up a little bit. My hand, my fingers were dropped. So my hand looked like this as I went like this. Um, and I couldn't jump. So I was trying to show that I can still I can still appreciate and express dance through movement to music without having to do all of these trend dances. And a lady duetted me, which is a side-by-side -side dance in TikTok in a wheelchair. And she said, um, I can't jump either. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, thankfully I have my, my hands my legs twitch and they're my disco legs. You know, it was that sort of thing. And I, I had reposted that on my Thanksgiving because I was so thankful for her perspective on that to really show that movement comes in all bodies and in all ways. And here we were as two people who seemingly may not be the best dancers, but we were, we were given it. Right. So I think that one stands out to me the most. That's awesome. That was awesome. So what is on the horizon for you? Any projects in the works? I do. I have a couple of projects in the works. So um, I am a speaker on chronic illness and disability. So I have a couple of those engagements coming up. I am working on a program um, to be downloadable so that it has further reach and access for people who are wanting to know more about anti-inflammatory living and holistic health, which I advocate for anyone, whether or not you have a chronic illness or not, but just as you know, thriving in your, your own life. Um, I, I can only be one person and do so many consults. So that's a way for reach and looking to work with brands who align with my philosophy and, and things that I, I believe in as well. So I'm very, I'm very, uh, keen on, uh, being as sincere as I can, but also, you know, to provide as many tools and strategies and options for people. Krista, before we go, 
I need to know about the roller skates. They're always in your <laughs> living room. And I just need to know, do you roller skate? And do you have advice for stopping while you're on a pair of roller skates? Yeah. So the roller skates are not, they're the four wheels, right? They're old school. And I grew up on roller skates and it was something that I did even when roller blades, like the inline skating came out. I was like, nope, these are my skates. These are what I'm going to live by. And when I was diagnosed with RA, uh, they went by the wayside. I just was not going to get on skates again, not just because I couldn't even get into them, but fear of falling. So as I regained my balance, one of the most greatest moments was hitting order (laughs) for new skates. I was like, oh my gosh, it's been so long. Can I even do this? And, um, you know, I, I went out and I tend to stop with a twirl and a stop. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe not, you know, I don't, I don't suggest looking for grass because you'll end up running. Um, (laughs) You know, if you have coordinated balance where you could put your toe down on the stopper a little bit to drag, but maybe just go to a rolling stop. Um, and then I tend to do a turn and then backstop. <laughs> All right. Well, I just have to perfect the uh, twirl then. <laughs> I can see a, a face plant on my end if I put my toe down. But yeah, that tends to happen. That's what I'm worried about. That yeah. will like pro- propel a twirl just by yeah. the immediate stop. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we want to leave our listeners with a challenge this week to dance for at least 15 minutes in the morning to get your day kicked off. I'm telling you what, I love my mornings after I've gotten some dancing done. And let us know how it's going, of course, by using the hashtag Siren Soapbox and maybe the hashtag Love Yourself Moving on all the social medias. Krista, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Do you want to thank tell you. our Do you want to tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes. So I am Kikra, K-I-C-K-R-A stands for Kick Rheumatoid Arthritis 18. So Kikra 18 on TikTok is my primary social. And then I'm also Kikra 18 on Instagram, which has a little more health oriented, expanded uh, commentary. So those are my two primary socials right now. Great. Sirens, thank you for sharing your dance experience with us this week. And thank you, fellow explorers, for listening to this episode. We'll put a link to Krista's TikTok and Instagram pages on our website so you can easily find her. And you'll find us at www.sirensoapbox.com. There you'll find links to our podcast and our YouTube channel. You can even learn all about the sirens. I think Sara is going to do some editing on her bio (laughs) in the near future. And you can even score some sweet siren soapbox merch. Like this can koozie. (laughs) Yes, or those mugs. I have a wire too. It's pretty sweet. So we appreciate you tuning in. And until next time, dive in. Stay curious and be happy. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Siren Soapbox. And a special thank you to C-Strings for providing our music. Snag their latest EP from iTunes today. Follow the Sirens on all the social medias. And don't forget to tell your friends about us. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'll catch you next time on another episode of Siren Soapbox.